Hi and welcome back. My name is Roxanne Pacheco. I am a clinical therapist certified in trauma and preventive medicine. It is with humility and a lot of humbleness that I, I share the information or the message that I have for you today. It is not uh, one that brings so much joy and comfort as a matter of fact. It might pull some strings or press some trigger buttons, but if it serves to bring hope to you, then my job would have been complete. Today I'm going to talk about depression. But more than talking about depression, I want to dig a little bit deeper as far as the shame and the stigma that comes from actually seeking out professional help. And in this case, professional help would involve either a peer support or an actual therapist that is certified and competent to be able to guide you through whatever it is that you may be going through. So I mentioned that we're going to focus on the depressive symptoms and the depressive symptoms include symptoms of loss of concentration, fatigue, uh, increase in weight or decrease in weight, increase in food intake or decrease in food intake, not having any interest for things that perhaps you used to enjoy doing. If you are married, perhaps there is a lack of intimacy with your spouse. And all of these things, although they may be very normal at some point in our lives, they stop being normal when they become your way of living and they start to impair your ability to be a functioning individual. So like I just mentioned, it's okay not to be okay for certain periods of time. But if this is something that has been going on and this is the way that you are living, then at that point, that is not okay. Now, one of the greatest barriers that I see in regards to stigma and shame, especially for men, and especially with a Christian background, is that we will be considered weak if we seek out any sort of help. If we open ourselves up and if we share what is it that's hurting us, we will be considered a weak individual. And here is where I want to actually challenge that thought. You see, in the Garden of Gethsemane, we see a Jesus that went with Peter and several of the disciples. And in this garden, Jesus asks Peter and the sons of Zebedee to keep watch because he is feeling grieved and in great despair, almost to the point of death. He goes off and he goes off into prayer and at that point, he is literally feeling the weight of the world upon him. And he comes out and he sees that those he trusted with staying awake have fallen asleep. And in that despair and in that hopelessness, he becomes discouraged. And once again, he tells them, stay awake. In other words, I need you. How many times has it not happened that you ask somebody, maybe a friend, maybe your best friend, maybe your spouse, whoever it may be, you ask them to stay awake for you. You let them know in your vulnerability that you need help, but you're placing your trust on that person to be the one to stay awake for you. And when you see that they have fallen asleep, perhaps they're no longer reaching out to you, perhaps they see you that it seems that everything went back to normal and they stopped asking, hey, are you okay? You, as Jesus did, begin to feel betrayed. And in that betrayal, you begin to grow hopeless and in despair. And you actually believe that even God has forgotten about you. Has it not happened to you? I know that there have been moments in my own life when I have felt that everybody, including God, has fallen asleep. And I'm the only one in that midst of that garden. And I feel that parts of my life are slowly falling asleep as well. In many cases, this is where we will see suicidal thoughts or suicidal ideation with some people actually attempting against their own lives. Because just as Jesus did, and think about this, he felt despair even to the point of death. Can you imagine how he knows what we feel simply because he felt it too? But I would like to take this one step further. And I challenge you and I invite you actually to go with me to Luke 23, 26. And here we, si we see Simon. And Simon is amongst the bystanders, amongst the people that are looking as Jesus is walking with his cross. Jesus is carrying his cross. And Simon is placed in the position to actually walk behind him and help him to carry this cross with him. And Luke says, 
As they led him away, him being Jesus, they seized one, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country and laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. You see, many can jump into conclusions at this point saying, well, isn't he the God, you know, the son of the God of the impossible? Why doesn't God fix things for him at this point? Doesn't he believe in miracles? Can't he, as he's done in the past, turn, you know, water into wine? Can't he do his own miracles? But the fact of the matter is that at this point, in the most humble version of himself, we see a Jesus that is walking in a path where you and I have walked as well. We see a Jesus that literally gives light to Philippians 2, 6 to 7, where it says, though he was in the form of God, he did not count equality with God, a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being both in the likeness of men. So at this point, I'm asking in vulnerability, those parts of you that are in despair, those parts of you that feel hopeless, those parts of you that feel that others have fallen asleep, those are the places where Jesus knows exactly where it is that you are. And those are the places where even Jesus at some point had to rely on somebody else, in this case, Simon, to help him to carry that cross. So that's where therapy comes in. Therapy comes where you place yourself in that vulnerable position, just as Jesus did at some point, where you allow somebody to help you to carry and to lift that cross, to ease in your burden, not because of who we are, but because he has already appointed certain individuals and equipped them to be those definitions of healer, counselor for you. And the beauty of it is, I think, as I think about all this, is that we don't lead from the front. If you think about it, Simon helped him to carry the cross, but Simon was at the back. And similarly, in order for you to get your healing, you have to carry your own cross. It's simply a matter of who is helping you to lift that weight from behind. Who is helping you so that in your journey, you can feel that although you did all the work, somebody was actually there with you. To know that pain, to feel that pain with you, and to say, you're gonna be okay. So this is my message for you today. I pray that it will be a tool for you to be able to see that there is more beyond what is right before your eyes. I pray that the pain that you have been carrying on to, holding on to, is something where you say, you know what, Jesus, you are the only one that in that garden can stay awake with me. You are the only one that will, will truly never leave me and never forsake me. You are the only one that I can trust blindly in. And like I've mentioned before, fall forward or fall back knowing that he's going to be the one to catch you. Why? Because he became flesh so that he can know exactly what we would be going through at one point or another. Now, if you're the one that's been experiencing this depression symptoms, this depressive symptoms rather. If you have had thoughts of hurting yourself, know that that is absolutely not okay. And I highly encourage that you seek either a doctor or a therapist to help you to navigate and to get you back to a state of becoming regulated in your mind, body, and spirit. I challenge that you will, as I've mentioned before, begin to use some of those I am affirmations if you have not seen that video, please go ahead and take a look at it. Maybe there's something that will speak life to you today. Learn to get to the root of what these problems are so that you will be healed, so that you don't have to carry that cross because a lot of the times we're carrying on to somebody else's weight without realizing it as well. It is always a privilege of mine to be able to sit here with you, to share a word with you so that a part of you can become alive and sooner or later you can actually have 
a life worth living. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, leave me a comment if it was something that edified your life, and share it with somebody else so that together we can become stronger. I remind you that trauma is real, but so is healing. I look forward to seeing you in one week for another one-on-one. -on -one.